form the United Netherlands. But democratically, a unified Netherlands existed up to the 1830s, where the Belgians broke away and formed their own independent state, dividing the northern Protestants from the southern Catholics. What if we could unify the Netherlands once again and form a union of all three states? That's right. I've not forgotten about you, Luxembourg. You're coming on this ride as well to defend against the Germans. Can we become the ultimate speed bump? A speed bump a little bit too high. That's right. You can't even hop over it or drive over it or parkour over it. The wall will be so large, Germany will not be able to get over it. Are you ready for the easiest way of forming the United Netherlands? And probably one of the most fun unification nations in Hearts of Iron 4. Whoa! Oh, here we go. And here we are forming a brand new government. That's right. A new government. And we're going democratic, so we're going to have to cave to the British. And then here, see this? Lead the new democracies. So we're going to pretend we love the British. Then immediately after becoming democratic, we're like, you know what? We hate the British. Make up your mind. Our government is weak and now on the verge of failing yet again. We'll give a new prime minister the task of performing a stronger cabinet. A little bit of DIY. No, new cabinet. Put up a new cabinet. Yes. Okay, you need to do that desperately because you've got political power problems and you need to fix that immediately. That's right. To make changes within the government, you need political clout. If you have no clout, then you can't change anything. Immediately, what we're going to do is build a few mills. Yeah, here and here will do fine. Machine tools, girders, and electronical mechanical engineering. The standard start. Make a little bit of artillery, a little bit of anti-air, and it looks pretty good. This is a good start. Let us begin. The Hoi for Grandest Land is confirmed. The Hoi for Grandest Land is a set of Hoi for multiplayer games live over the space of three whole days that you get to play and role play with newly made friends and meet the team behind Hearts of Iron. This project is partnered together by Paradox Interactive and Turbo Larp and I will be attending. There will be multiple professional actors enhancing the authentic World War II experience. Are you going to respect the hierarchy of command or will you become court-martialed? The Grand Design will be taking place in Czechar Castle in Poland from November the 21st to the 24th. This is your chance to play the actual role in a military academy, participate in vital strategic missions, collaborate with your fellow players and become the greatest Hearts of Iron 4 player. I can't wait to see you there. Five speed. Let's go. A new government has formed, but suddenly we're defeatist. We have political clout, but we're not really wanting to go to war. But on the plus side, oh, 100% stability. Stability for pacifism and mustaches. The gateway to Europe. Europe is open unless you want to leave it. Oh, why does everything remind me of Brexit? And with us, you need to plastic to the British. How many times? Let me have a look. 25 times. Okay. Which you gain five points every time. So that means you do it five times. In the meantime, we're going to abandon the gold standard and placate again. Don't worry about the political power you put into this. You get it all back at the end anyway. Another one. Uh Another one. Okay, you get the idea. So get at least 25 to 30 points. That way it won't cancel the focus when you select it. But next up, you can cave to the British. Boom, cave to the British, done. There you go. We have cave to the British. It will likely that this will result in a greatly increased British influence over the Netherlands. <laughs> we had no choice. Oh no, tea and crumpets. Our Dutch cuisine has been destroyed. No more sprinkles on our toast. Unify with democracy, which gives ticking stability. Oh, come on, really. We already have 100% stability. And straight away, without messing around, we can lead the minor democracies. This immediately removes neutrality. Straight away allows us to build relations to a bunch of other minor nations. Wow, 10 in total. Look, guys, I think that communism and that fascism thing, I think it's kind of bad. I think we should probably stop that. Hmm, that's going to require some thought. So we could progress down this part of the focus stream. We're going to come back to here anyway, but we don't need to rush at the moment because we can overturn the budget cuts and gain more support. And we need more support because it gives us command power and command power allows us to hire a chief of the army gives xp see it all comes in one big circle doesn't it who would have known pacifism isn't really that great oh well when you've got lots of resources but all of the wrong resources so many nations can relate to this well in that case you do free trade gives you all the right bonuses and plus it gives you the ability to export more stuff which might result in more civilian factories no and in this case not appoint the supreme commander what an awesome name what's your role in the army well i'm the supreme commander damn i'm the the supreme YouTuber. No, that doesn't work. 
Okay, we're going to rush to Spurs Industry 3. Way ahead of time. It's definitely worth it because it gives more building slots. And as you can probably see, there's a lack of building slots inside of the Netherlands. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of roaming opportunities. So we'll take advantage of that at every possible opportunity. All right, we get to appoint the Supreme Commander, which in this case is going to be the defense guy because we're going to be defending a lot to begin with. You probably think there's some complexity to this strategy, right? You probably think there's a lot of like hurdles you've got to jump through. Now, it's just one button here. Form the Bellalux. You approach the Bellalux nations and invite them to join your faction. Oh, that was hard. Form the Bellalux. Belgium agrees. Luxembourg agrees. And what's this? What's this? A faction? I like the color of that. The Peach Buff Estate. It just make me wonder, you know, if the Bellalux did unify against the Axis, what difference it would have made. Sit your butt down. We're going to find out. Do you know how we talked earlier about it was just a button? I I'm not even joking. It is just a button. Look, proposed Benelux unification. I mean, there's no threats that we're aware of right now. Oh, it's 1937. Hold on to your hats. But we have the ability to just press a button and we gain cause and axe all of our neighbors. I would, this would kind of make sense in a way. If it had like 50% world tension and Poland was getting invaded, that would kind of make sense. But just hit this button right now and they say yes. Well, that was pretty easy, right? No. It wasn't pretty easy. This is only half the battle. Holding against the Germans is still going to be pretty hard. I'm going to make you a perfect division that's going to show you how to hold against the Germans really well. Sit down. We're not done yet. Oh, wait. We even gained the Congo as well. <laughs> That's so cool. Nice. Wait, wait. The Congo? Is that nice? Most of the bonuses now from the mini focus tree on the right are pretty much done. This kind of allows you to declare war on Germany early. I don't know why you'd want to do that and form like a European Union. Uh, why would that be a good idea? <laughs> Anyway, we're going to continue on the left side now by modernizing the infantry equipment and then go for secret staff talks, which unlocks the ability to press a bunch of buttons and get free stuff. And who doesn't like free stuff, right? Please subscribe to this video if you enjoy free stuff. Right now, production is kicking ass. Taking out the Netherlands and Luxembourg, getting all their mills is making us explode. So what we need to do now is just diversify our production by getting a little bit of AA. A little bit of AA tanks. Who don't like those, right? The Dutch with manpower. Well, pacifism has truly ended. Wait, has it? Oh, no, no, it hasn't. Let's pretend it has, though. Diversify is my middle name. Diversity is our strength. Diversify in tanks. Wow. Belgium has an adaptable general at the start of the game. Mr. Generic Portrait. You are a wizard, Harry. Welcome to the armed forces. Oh, we've got an organizer, too. So we're going to promote him later on to get logistics wizard. Wow. What's this? The Dutch has the screwdriver. The Belgium has the hammer. And Luxembourg is the nail. But you know, we've got all the tools we need to defeat the Germans. Who would have known unified is our strength? The diversity. Oh, whatever. So exploit time, boys. If you don't want to lose your precious equipment, which most of the time is artillery and tanks, is you make a full-size division like this at 24 width, which will later transform into the division you actually want. And you replace this one, let's say, with a tank. And because it's still at 24 width, well, 26 in this case, when you change the division, it won't lose much XP. So you won't have to train them for excessive periods and loot lots of equipment. Makes life so much easier. All right, we've done the secret staff talks now, but don't talk about it. Shh, it's a secret, which is something we'll take advantage a little bit later on. You know the feedback game in Metabot, now into war medium slap on an anti-air the small turret whack on that armor and give it enough engine so it can move voila the anti-air wee boy and it's important you mark it to auto upgrade saving you a bunch of xp spies are super essential you'll neuter all the planning bonus germany has attacking you and you need to be able to defend to the hilt and in this case that's exactly what we're doing do you see that going up there 41 percent, 42 percent, 43 percent. that's right that just completely removes all planning bonus we know exactly what you're up to mr h there we go. See this division? 26 combat worth. 26. Then we convert it to the division we actually want. No, actually, we have to convert it by changing it manually. So artillery, artillery, remove that guy, put in the medium anti-air, and we pop in the anti-air as well. And then if we convert, the amount of XP we lose is nothing. Okay, well, that, that was unexpected. Oh, we have the exact same level of XP. So we don't even need to exercise them, meaning we're not going to lose this precious equipment, which is the tank and the artillery, which costs significantly more. We only lose the cheap equipment which in this case is just the infantry equipment yes cheese it exists a massive mountain of cheese 
All right, maintenance is going to be required. We're going to get bombed to hell. So armor trains are required. And always be working on the industry. Once again, industry always for the win. Maximum production cap. Bellow Lux was just an idea. And I mean, it's already happened. So why do we need a faction? Because <laughs> we're going to join one of the neighboring factions. Hmm, I wonder which one. And okay, here we go. The secret staff talks. Though we are racially neutral, we are nonetheless looking to secret staff talks with our neighbors. So one of the downfalls of the Netherlands, they thought it was going to be like the first world war where they could remain neutral and no one would bother them well they were wrong we will tell the people of the netherlands that we are still being neutral but kind of doing uh, behind the scenes secret rearmament first of all we're gonna ask germany i know of all the people germany for guns and they say no and britain they say no and france and they say yes so this seems to be solely based on the relationship we've got with them in this case let's boost relations and see if that makes a difference initially we're going to be quite weak because we need to mobilize and we don't have the full manpower this focus here shell socked from the great war will go away immediately when someone declares war on us so we don't have to get rid of it based on using decisions and whatnot which is a long drawn out process so to delay things what we can do is draw up a plan which gives us a defensive bonus in the event someone declares war on us but for now we're just gonna ask for equipment francis Yes! And, oh, Britain, really? Come on. We're wasting political power now. Ask France again. Yes! Okay, I'm just going to ask France over and over again. France! Yes! I think I might have just found an unlimited equipment glitch. France! Yes! Okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here. This seems to be glitched. <laughs> France! Yes! So I don't really want to select a focus here because I'm kind of farming equipment <laughs> from France. Dark days are coming now, so I'm going to have to build a few forts. Just a few, just a handful, not too many. Don't get over ahead of yourself. Once again, just creates just a slight wall that the Germans are going to break through, which is going to slow and hinder their progress initially anyway. And also, if we're going to battle plan, which we will because we're lazy, we could have the maintenance companies on, which gives a big boost of reliability. And that will recover us so many pieces of equipment that we're going to lose in active combat. Why not give some extra bonuses, right? Why not, right? Why not? So I'm going to draw up a combined staff plan with France. And there's a yes, which gives a 180 day defensive bonus against a major that taxes. I wonder what major is going to attack us, eh? Mm, I wonder. Germany has declared war on Poland. Maybe it's just one country, eh? Maybe Germany's just going to attack one country and then it'll be done, right? Potentially, maybe, possibly, probably not. The Maginot line of the Belolux is very thin and very weak and probably going to bash through it immediately. Uh. Well, they've declared war. I never expected them to. This was a surprise by everyone. I know everyone's in shock. Gasp. Join the allies and hold. 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 Okay. So initially, they are punching through. They are bashing against us. The weakest is this northern strip here. Hence the reason why I've gone for extra layer thinner with the forts. We've got to make sure we've got to keep repairing the forts, though. They will continuously bomb us over and over again. But by the looks of things, things are looking pretty sweet. Ron would like to send us some extra divisions. You know what? We can need any help we can. Come home. We need to fight. The first break in the front has happened. The tanks plowing against the forts just go right over the top of them. Literally fort speed bumps. Mm. Anyway, extensive conscription. Let's do some proper conscription now. We need divisions so badly. It's GRP in itself. We desperately need assistance. And what is Britain doing? Nothing. And France is doing nothing too. So France, you're equally as bad. This is pretty much riding the storm, to be honest. To begin with, they've got like a thousand casts, and that's what's doing most of the damage here. Hence the reason we made the AA tanks and a little bit of support AA, because we've got to knock down these numbers. And as you can see, as time just progressed, they are losing a substantial amount of cast. And when the cast numbers get critically low, their pushing capability is going to be very low as well. But as you can see, per day, I'm shooting an average of 10 to 15 to sometimes 20 cast down per day. We just got to keep it up. Hold, brothers! A breach in the heartlands of Belgium. Northern state, half of it has been taken, but we still control the factories. <sighs> the fighting is becoming pretty intense. Replace the defeatist in government. The little Churchill has arrived, which gives us a massive boost in war support. I think he gives like a 15% bonus in war support. And of course, war support adds extra defense on core territory. More defending for the win. But by the looks of things, we're doing quite well. And look at Bren, so ballsy, doing a naval invasion. Try and take back Hanover. Victoria would be proud. I think that's it. I think we've reached the point where we're not getting pushed anymore. We're actually holding. But do you know what the soft underbelly of Bella looks is? France. Please don't do this to me, France. Please, just just hold on. Please, please. You can tell when the Germans are burnt out because if you zoom in on the divisions, look at the strength of them here. You look really closely at this bow. Strength of the division is 41% and 46%. They've lost all their equipment. <laughs> it's only been a year of war. In fact, less than a year of war. Been five months, four months, and you're already burnt out. 
Are you even trying? Mustache man has been replaced with another mustache man. And he's called PP 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 PP. It's time for the cavalry. They have arrived to the front. So the plan is to kind of wait for them to stop bashing their head against me. Oh, 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 oh. I think that might actually be now. It is time. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Here we go. Fighting against our own forts on the other side. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to do that thing where you exercise on the front line to try and bait the AI attacking you. <laughs> I think this one might have been patched, boys. Another army. Another one. It's how the game with so little manpower as the Netherlands, but in this form, I get practically unlimited manpower. This is well and truly Super Saiyan Netherlands. Four armies. One made up of kind of British slash Netherlands troops. But for the most part, most of the troops are my pride and joy. Oh, so much. I hope you don't get nerfed in the new expansion. Paradox, I'm looking at you. Anyway, before we go, push, gentlemen, push. The worst thing about building forts is that when you counterattack after losing the forts, you have to defeat the enemies in your forts, which just feels like really awful. It's the worst feeling in the world. Come to destroy your own forts that you built and your enemies using them against you. Italians getting absolutely demolished. Two more provinces and we've captured back everything no just the one now just the one a bit like the germans occupying the channel islands just to say that they own some british territory but we liberate the last part of german occupied netherlands we're back baby we're going to celebrate by building islands fake islands why not because we can and i will Oh, and we occupy a part of the Rhineland now. That's right. We've got our own little pride. We've all got our own little pride, little spot to say, Germany, we own part of you. It might not be a big part, but we own part of you. Okay. We really like that railway gun there, though. That'd be nice. What is this? Why is that bomber doing it? Did, did you turn in the air? Operation Liberate Bellalux has been complete. Now it's time for Operation Defeat the Axis of Evil. Yes, that's right. I just quoted George Bush. Get over it. The quote, uh, if you kick in the door, the whole rotten structure will come crashing down. I forget who. I forget, <laughs> I forget who, uh, who the quote is by. Maybe someone in the comments can remind me. <laughs> the big squeeze has begun and they've not even declared war on the Soviets either. Well, once in a blue moon, you see this. The Japanese have actually pulled their finger out. Do you even know where this in the world is? If you do, comment below. This is it final push? And we're back. Every day that passes, I appreciate collab governments more and more and more. But I'm democratic, so I'm not allowed to do uh, collab governments. Sad. Rush to Vienna. Go, go, go. And boom. Explosion of front lines. Put another one there. And attack the Italians. Go, go, go. Crash and burn. The Bellalux has become Croatia-fied. Germany, you've been denied the coast. Well, my, my, Dave, that is a very large navy you have right there. Ah, oh, some of these ships seem to have German and Italian names. I wonder where you got those from. Hmm. Germany has decided to join the Japanese faction. Like Germany is looking for a capitulation part two. The boys can never give up giving up. Oh, Dave, what's going on here? What are you doing with this navy? No, please don't do that. Why don't you play the game differently? Why do you keep playing like this? Oh, no. Every single game, Dave, you play the same way. Why don't you change how you play? Uh, listen, it, it's what I like, okay? This is what I enjoy. Let me do what I enjoy. Okay. You know, as much historical significance Nagasaki is, it's just a really great place to naval invade and it's always works. So I just keep doing it over and over again because it works. It's the equivalent of Cardiff in the UK. You naval invade there and you just have like a really high chance of winning. So, I mean, I like winning. Japan, you came so close to defeating the Chinese. So close, but yet so far. My war contribution is 14%. You know what I do want? A navy. And I take another bite out of Germany. Now, I have the biggest navy in the world. Thanks, Japan. And now you have to just deal with this border gore. <sighs> Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Do you want more? Oh, YouTube's giving you more. Give this one a click. This is the next video.